Welcome to Red Baron Reviews. I'm Baron, and today we are taking a look at this M16A1 dissipator, and we're going to have a discussion about should you build or buy your AR-15. I'll see you after the intro. So guys, this video is going to be a little bit different than the other dissipator videos. Um, I'm going to talk in depth about should you buy or build your AR. We're going to do pros and cons to both. And not just dissipators, just ARs in general. So if that's what you're here for, go ahead and skip ahead to the time posted down here if you're not real concerned with this specific build. And so if you're going to stick with me for this, I'm going to go through my thoughts and impressions on this and then what exactly it is and how I built it. So guys, my thoughts and opinions on this rifle is I absolutely love it. Uh, out of all the ARs I've ever owned, ever shot, ever been issued, this hands down is my favorite. It is soft shooting. It is ultra reliable. It's simple. It's fun. It's lightweight. I mean, I just I freaking love this gun. This is hands down my favorite gun. And I've shot a lot more expensive guns. Uh, I've shot full auto ones. I just... If I had to choose one AR in the world, this is the one. I freaking love it. Um, I shot this thing out to about 300 meters. No issues. It's fun to shoot up close. It's fun to shoot fast. Um, and it's just, it's been bomb proof. It's been used as a truck gun. Um, I've taken it camping, that type of stuff. This gun, it's my go-to for an AR. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about what exactly it is. So guys, to talk about this build, um, I want to talk a little bit about what inspired it. Um, I read an article about a gentleman who was taking a three-day gun class, and it was in kind of inclement weather, rain, mud, that type of stuff, and uh, he had brought an AK and an AR, and most students were using those, and uh, everybody had malfunctions. Everybody had issues getting their guns running once they got muddy, except for one guy. That guy had an M16A1 upper on whatever lower he was running, but it was simple, no optics, no lights, no nothing fancy, just the upper, plain Jane, a sling, and that guy ran it really well. Um, and so that kind of inspired me to do this build. Um, on top of that, I've built an M16A1 before, or at least a clone, and I, I loved it. Very well balanced, that 20 inch pencil barrel is great. It is, I mean, they should have left that pencil barrel there. So much better than the A2 or the A4. It's more balanced, it shoots well, it's accurate. I never noticed stringing with my shot groups. Um, even when the barrel got hot, it was just a phenomenal rifle. However, I didn't want to do another 20 inch build. So when I saw this Colt parts kit come up for sale on Centerfire Systems in early 2020, I jumped on it and uh, settled on a dissipator. To be more specific, a Colt 605. Now, this is not clone correct. Spoiler alert, it's not even close to being clone correct. However, it was the inspiration for this build. Now, a true 605 build will be an SBR because the barrel length, even with the muzzle device pinned and welded, still would not meet. It is just under 16 inches. I'm not interested in paying for a attack stamp. I'm also not interested in cutting my barrel back to get as close as I can on this. It's just, it, it's not something I wanted to go through the hassle to do on this build. Um, another issue is the Colt 605 has a rifle length gas system, as where this is a mid-length. For those who don't know, the rifle length would run all the way to the front sight block. The issue with that is the gun doesn't have enough what's called dwell time to cycle reliably. You have to drill out that gas port to allow more gas into the gun, and then it could be finicky with certain types of ammo. It's also something that I'm not interested in doing. I, I don't have the right tools to do it, and I don't have the patience for it. At least I didn't when I built this. So... No, it's not clone correct, but I love the way it looks. Most people, especially at a distance, can't tell a difference. Most people don't even know what the Colt 605 is. So um, with that, guys, we'll go through the build. Almost all the small parts on this are Colt, um, with the exception of the barrel, the gas block, the gas tube, lower, and the furniture. Uh, the furniture is Brownells Retro Furniture. For those who are looking at their retro furniture, understand that the stock does not have a trap door in it, um, unless that's changed since I built this. So understand it is an earlier type of stock. However, it looks the part. It's the same size. Um, 
But starting from the front, we have an M16A1 flash hider. It is the A1 version because it's not filled in on the bottom like the A2. We have a Colt front sight um, to include the front sight post. It's more of the tapered instead of the squared off flat like the A2 and A4 has. For those who are building, that's a small detail. Um, and it's, in my opinion, superior to the A2 or A4 style front sight. Um, the barrel is a 16 inch Palmetto barrel. Uh, it's a one in seven twist and it is pencil profile. Um, I chose this barrel for several reasons. One, I have other guns that have a 16 inch barrel with a one in seven twist. So I know where to hold using iron sights. I don't have to relearn the gun. If I went with that 605 style barrel, it's like a one in 11 or one in 10 or, or something like that. Um, I don't know how that's gonna perform with different types of ammo. I know how this performs with the type of ammo that I buy. So reason one to get this barrel. Reason two, it's cheap. It's a nitrided barrel from Palmetto. I've never had issues with their barrels. They're great. Um, I did have to put some metal in this front sight post or front sight block to get it to fit, kind of made a shim. And then we had to uh, pin it and we tacked it so that this wouldn't move. Uh, I did have help with that from the gunsmith because I don't have a welding machine but or a welder, but um, we, we got that on there, no problem. The gas block, I do not remember the brand. However, it is not just put in place with set screws. It's also pinned. So uh, that's to improve reliability. I don't want the thing sliding back and forth and, and having issues um, with cycling or anything like that. Once we got it set and it was good, we made sure it's not going anywhere. This is a Palmetto mid-length gas tube. It is nitrided. Uh, for those who don't know, again, rifle length goes all the way to the front. You've got your mid-length and then a carbine length that's stopped back here. Uh, the reason I chose the mid-length is because they've been proven to be reliable. Most builds now are going with them. Um, parts are available. It's softer recoiling than a carbine. Um, I just, I really like the mid-length system. And underneath the hand guards, you can't tell that this isn't a rifle length system. So uh, that's why I chose that. Um, moving back, you know, Colt Delta Ring. Um, everything in the uppers Colt. I did rebuild the rebuild. I put a new O-ring and spring in the bolt from BCM. Uh, while I'm speaking of BCM, I also put their buffer spring in there. I put new springs in this one. I built it, so I wouldn't have issues there. Um, the fire control group is a mil spec. I believe it's BCM. I'd have to look again, but I do think it is a, a BCM uh, mil spec trigger. Uh, my idea with this is, yes, I understand I'm using cheap palmetto parts. The low receiver, by the way, is a palmetto. I understand I'm using pal palmetto parts. But the major reliability parts, the bolt carrier, the trigger, those type of things, they're BCM or Colt. Um, may the, barrel, the barrel may wear out faster than like a Colt or an FN or a Bravo Company barrel. Sure, I understand that, but it's still going to go bang when I pull the trigger. I'm probably not going to put enough rounds through this to shoot the barrel out. What I do need this to do, though, is shoot every time I pull the trigger. And so that's why I've invested money into these other parts. Um, and then moving back, it's just a pretty standard fare. Um, you know, Brownell's stock, again, all the small parts are Colt, and that is what it is. So should you buy or should you build? Well, let's start with buying a complete factory-built rifle. So the pros to buying one is that it should, in theory, work and run flawlessly right out of the box. It is ready to go as soon as you pick it up. It should also come with some kind of warranty. Um, some manufacturers, you know, they cover it for a year, three years, five, whatever. Some it's the lifetime that you own the gun. And then others like Stag, it is for the life of that rifle or, or AR pistol. If you buy a used Stag, guess what? It still has a full warranty. And I've had to use it with stag and great that's a video for another time but i love stag um and ruger has pretty good warranties um unfortunately colt does not have a great warranty um but just do your research before you buy a a factory gun but it should come with a warranty it should be reliable out of the box and ready to shoot um the cons to buying is that generally speaking if you start putting a bunch of aftermarket stuff like say you change the bolt carrier out well now you have an extra bolt carrier, but you paid for that when you bought the rifle. Um, if you change muzzle devices and triggers and all kinds of things like that, 
you're dumping money into a rifle, and yes, you have extra parts now, but you had to pay for those on the front end. Uh, not only that, when you start putting aftermarket parts into a factory gun, it could void your warranty. You you have to read up on your warranty before you buy the gun. Um, that's that's my biggest piece of advice if you're going to buy one. Um, again, I really like Stag because you can get them used or new. They have a great warranty. Um, I've had aftermarket stuff in mind, and they still took care of me. I don't know if that's normal, but um, they've been a good company. But do your research because there are several companies that as soon as you slap a aftermarket bolt carrier group into it, no more warranty. So that's the cons. Another con to buying a complete rifle is that it costs more. Yes, on some level, it costs more. If you have a complete Palmetto rifle and then you have a Palmetto complete rifle kit minus lower and then you buy the lower and they're the same rifle, it's going to cost you less to buy the kit and then you assemble it. And the reason being is the government charges manufacturers a tax to sell a complete rifle. Now, if you buy the strip lower in that kit, even though it's the same gun, it's going to cost you less because the manufacturer is going to charge less since they're not being taxed on it. So that's going to be a positive for the build and a negative for the buy. And so with that, let's go ahead and roll into the building your AR. Now, the building an AR can be many things. It can be putting the barrel on. It can be doing the whole thing from scratch. It could be just buying one of those kits I mentioned, which is everything, and then you buy the strip lower, and you're basically just assembling the lower. The upper's already put together. And, um, you know, if you buy a complete lower and a complete upper, depending on unless legalities have changed since I worked in the firearm industry, that's not considered a complete firearm. So technically, upper, lower, put it together, that's a build. Now, guys in the gun community are going to go off on me. I understand that's not really building an AR. But is building an AR really building a gun? Have you looked at building AKs? Just putting it out there. But all that aside, generally speaking, you're going to save money building. Um, not always. Back to that first point, if you're going to throw aftermarket stuff in, like if you want a WMD bolt carrier group and you want a, I don't know, an ALG trigger or a, a Geisley trigger, something like that, then yeah, it's probably going to save you a little bit of money just to build it that way up front, unless you find a factory rifle that comes with that stuff. Um, if you want to do something very specific, like this rifle, you're going to have to build it. There is no configuration that's like mine. There's not. You cannot find one that's already built like this. Brownells is the closest, but theirs has a different twist rate. Theirs, I believe, is pinned and welded um, to make it 16 inches. Theirs is more clone correct than mine is. Um, so theirs is close. It looks similar, but there's nobody that builds one like mine. So if you want one like this, you're going to have to build it. It's just how it is. Uh, the other thing with building it is you understand how the gun works, and so if you start having issues with it, it's easier for you to self-diagnose and fix them. The downside to it is it may not have a warranty, depending who you buy the kit from. And if you buy multiple parts from multiple manufacturers to build your rifle, it may not have a warranty. Now, if you buy, for instance, Stag, upper, lower, parts, it's all Stag, but guess what? All those parts have a warranty. Palmetto, I believe, is the same way. If you buy Palmetto parts and build a Palmetto gun, it carries Palmetto's warranty. So again, do your research, but if you're going to pick and choose and cherry pick parts, understand, probably not going to have a warranty with that. But the bright side is you'll know how to fix your gun because you've assembled it. Um, as far as building them, uppers aren't terrible. If you're putting on blocks like this, sometimes they can be a little out of spec and then getting the gas right is frustrating. But as far as buying strip lowers and assembling them goes, super easy. After you do it the first time, it couldn't be easier. It saves you money, and uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, my one piece of advice on strip lowers, when you put them together, where this bolt catch goes, I put a piece of electrical tape the length of this and the length of it in front of it so that when I'm using a hammer or a mallet, I'm not going to mar this up. That's my one piece of advice, especially if it's your first time doing it, using punches and the hammers and things like that. Tape your gun up. Don't use cheap tape. Just get electrical tape. It works very well for this. So that's kind of the pros and cons between buying versus building. I hope that helped you make a decision. 
You really can't go wrong either way. Just do your research on the companies before you purchase their products. And guys, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, comment, like, those type of things. I really like engaging with you guys in the comments. If there's any questions you have, ask them. And if there's any video ideas or uh, videos you'd like to see, please let me know. We're going to have one more video in the Dissipator series, and then that will conclude it. So guys, I will see you on the next video. And as always, stay free. Someone's here.